Hey, this is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast, where Joel and I discuss topics like cord cutting, money-saving tech, and just being an all-around citizen of the inner tubes. Inner tubes? Nah, inner webs. No, inner tubes are things people ride. It's a series like, of tubes, man. It's, it's a series God, of Ted tubes. Stevens rides again. All right. So today, we're re- mainly going to talk about the new... Un, I guess the war of unlimited data between all of the wireless yeah. providers. I mean, it's an interesting like little exercise they've got going on right uh, now. Yeah, but I mean, I well, I'll, I'll get into it. I did actually went up to Verizon site because I'm a Verizon customer. I went up and 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 experimented with what I would gain with the new system with the yeah. new um, plans, uh, and I was kind of disappointed. But we'll save that for later. You digress. Um, First, I want to talk about a bit of news that happened last week. Um, now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's more of what was said about it. But Hulu dropped a few Viacom shows, uh, namely uh, Comedy Central, is the um, Daily Show. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, that was like my way to watch the, the Daily, Daily show. show, right? Yeah, and um, they're dropping it. And the thing that's not really that really gives me pause about it the viacom ceo bob backish kind of hinted that they're stepping away from what they're calling you know svod's which would be like your hulus and your netflix and your amazon yeah because they're cannibalizing their own business is what what he's saying so how so that's the strategy he's looking at he said essentially um, well, actually, let me just read the quote. He said, we will also reinforce the pay TV ecosystem by being highly selective in striking agreements with over-the-top distributors, confining those deals to largely library content. We do want to support the success of virtual MVPDs as we have with partners like Sling and DirecTV now uh, and embrace their roles as catalysts for innovation. So they're okay with those cable-like packages over right. the internet, but they don't want to support things like Hulu and Netflix and Amazon, it seems. That's really strange to me. They, um, they, they're even going as far as how I watch uh, cable shows is like just buying something on Amazon. Yeah. Um, cause they give you, you know, the day, like walking dead, I watch on Amazon. I'll just yeah, yeah, go and yeah. buy the current season and AMC puts it out there. Yeah. Yep, it's one day, one day after it airs. Um, they're saying that they're only going to show like past seasons now. It's like Vi- makes, for Viacom makes shows. No sense. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't. And like, really, this is so far, they're only pulling bar rescue and daily show. It looks like you'll still be able to watch, uh, inside Amy Schumer, broad city, drunk history and workaholics. All right. So and South park. That's the thing. Think think about. Oh, Sorry. No, no, you're fine. I just don't get it, right? Like, take take the Daily Show, right? Daily Show is inherently timely. It's news. Yeah, it's news based comedy. Well, you can still watch it on the website, of course, but it's just not not as convenient. Well, and it, what's really silly to me is that the way I watch the Daily Show these days is normally just on my phone. Yeah, same. Like, I just watch, like, clips that are posted on Facebook or catch it on YouTube. Or... Yeah, well, that's the funny thing is I just let social media sort it out all out for me yeah. nowadays. I, I don't watch Pick a whole the highlights episode of it. Or anything yeah. anymore, especially sketch shows or clip shows like that. Like, like Saturday Night Live, while I will watch one fully every once in a while, I'll I just... watched... Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, it's like, usually when you watch an episode of Saturday Night Live, you get really one or two hilarious sketches yeah and it's a lot and the, and weekend updates usually and they're pretty, pretty seven solid. minutes long or whatever and, right so weekend yeah. update is pretty much guaranteed hilarious yeah and then you get one or two sketches that are well usually one maybe two the rest is kind of just hot garbage yeah and it's like i don't I don't remember the last time I actually tuned in on a Saturday night. Oh, I've never watched it live. Well, I did it this last 
Saturday night. Oh, okay. And I was like, what is wrong with me? But it's it's because... I thought that was a fairly weak episode, too, because actually I watched that on... Yeah, I didn't think it was that great. No. It was good and so on. The Kate um, McKinnon one was funny. Yeah. Where she played, like, the Fatal Attraction send-up. Yeah, that was really good. Kellyanne Conway. That That was was good. good. But, Creepy as all hell, but good. But yeah, but in general, I could actually can't believe they did that one. I thought that was really, really good. I, I like dark humor, and that was I thought that was that dark. Was pretty that was dark. Dark for them. Yeah, and um, but like you take the Daily Show, and the Daily Show has been a flagship, right? Oh, yeah. I, like I've been watching Comedy Central since Doctor Katz was on it, right? Like, and there are many listener right now. Who's like? Oh, I love Doctor Katz. That was a great show. That's where I learned about a lot of comedians that I... Dom Herrera used to be on there. Dave Chappelle before. Uh, he that's was where I learned one. about um, uh, what's his name? Regan. Oh, um, he's the comedian's comedian. Yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of guys that were great on that show. Anyways, that's twenty years ago, right? Like, right. And, and so Dave Chappelle started. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there. Dave Chappelle. He With had an Aquaman sketch. It was great. Oh yeah, yeah, and the Wonder Woman bit too. Yeah, yeah. The last of them make you tell the <laughs> yeah. truth. Yeah, that was Damn, great. Damn, you look great in them boots. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like anyway, so like that, you know, you go back to the era. Nobody watched Comedy Central, and The Daily Show when John Stewart started on it, probably like second, third season, that really launched that network. That and the Dave Chappelle show, right? right. Like, well, I remember were... I started watching with Craig Kilborn was um, yeah. the original host. I watched it too. It, it was way different. Well, it was it was closer to what's that? Um, what's that? Uh, Five questions. It was like yeah. yeah, it was gimmicky a bit at but times. Anyways, just to cut to cut out the Daily Show from any ability to view it, it just seems like a strange tactic. Yeah, I mean, I just don't get it. The, I have a feeling that Viacom is starting to think that that now that Wheeler has gone from the FCC, yeah, that maybe things might start shifting back. I'd be really surprised. I mean, like honest. I mean, obviously, you and I are going to be talking about like, oh, it's a trend. It's not going to stop. Blah blah blah. Of course, but like, it's just a lot of people have have tended away from major cable packages yeah well espn i saw something espn is losing about ten thousand subscribers a day yeah a day i mean it's nuts i I don't see how anyone can look at the pay tv industry and think that it's going to be around in the form it is now i mean how many shows do people watch you have all these channels you probably watch maybe 10 of them yeah what, what it reminds me of is what the newspaper industry went through 15 20 years ago and what came out of that is that there were a few newspapers uh, that people would actually keep a subscription to. Right. Right. And it's, you know, the Journal, the Times, the Post, the Herald, uh, the Miami Herald, that is. And yeah. And a handful of others, right? Yeah. And, then, and then your very, very tight locality paper because it's got, I don't know, local sports and things like that. Right. But everything else just kind of died out and and i would not be surprised at all if the paid television industry did something very similar where you you end up still there is a paid television industry it's just much much smaller yeah i mean it's interesting because you know cbs is going a different direction they're going they're putting into all access and you know a bunch of the other networks are looking like disney is looking to go direct with ESPN. Yeah. So, I mean, they're kind of uh, swimming upstream here, it seems. Yeah, but, you know, it's the direction they're going. Yep. What so, are you going to do? What, we'll see. But um, I also wanted to talk about um, a certain FCC commissioner, but not Chairman Pai. What? Yeah, Mike O'Reilly. Yeah, his, uh, his number two said something he started he dissented about this originally um when they set the broadband standard to 25 mips he is he's been against that yeah and he said to justify settings to justify setting the new benchmark at 253 as opposed to the current 41 or even 101 
as several commenters suggested, the report notes that 4K TV requires 25 MIPS. But 4K TV is still relatively new and is not expected to be widely adopted for years. So that was like one of his justifications. And he went on to say, while the statute directs us to look at advanced telecommunications capability, this stretches the concept to an untenable extreme. Some people, for example, believe probably probably incorrectly that we're on the path to interplanetary teleportation. Should we include the estimated bandwidth for that as well? Okay. He just... Wow, compared uh... 4K TV <laughs> to interplanetary teleportation. Well, Dennis, what would you do? <laughs> well, I can watch 4K TV. And I teleported here. Oh, okay. What's your point? Well, maybe he has a good point. I don't know. But no, but I'm just like, how absurd is that? And <sighs> and and here's the funny thing is, who cares? I don't cuz cuz the the broadband standard isn't it doesn't mandate anything. It doesn't. You know what it does, though? It stops companies from getting subsidies because that's what happens. With a standard at 4 or 10, Verizon and AT&T will grab up that money and give people DSL. That's what will happen because there's money that says if you provide internet to X amount of subscribers, you can have this bucket of cash. Mm. Well, they'll just take the bucket of cash, give – you know, a hundred thousand or a million people DSL and be done with it. Right. And this will stop them from doing that because broadband, if it's considered 25 MIPS, doesn't need you like that doesn't count to do. Do you have to do lay right. fiber? So doesn't it also uh, prevent the providers from advertising what they've laid as broadband if all they've really done oh is yeah no oh, it definitely does and this is that's all this so. is this is like this is basically somebody he's like a ventriloquist a ventriloquist dummy for you know telecom and, and cable right now it's yeah. really all it is it's a really because there's no reason to be why not set a benchmark that puts us you know ahead right yeah. Why not? I mean, you know, aim for the stars, you might get the moon kind of thing. Yeah. Well, in, in here's the only place I differ with you on this. I think I think your outrage is justified, right? Mine's just in a different direction. Mine's if you're going to shill for someone, right? Right. At least do it well, right? Like cuz to do this interplanetary teleportation, oh, I know, I know. Anal- like that's just lazy or stupid, and I doubt maybe it's both. Stupid. I feel like the strategy is just to throw so much out there that you really don't even know what to defend or what to, what to get angry about. Yeah, what to get angry about because it's complete ridiculousness. I mean, and and for the record, according to Akamai, which is you know the. Yeah. They basically they do a lot of benchmarking for the net. I had a colleague who went over and is now working over there. Our average speed is right now is sixteen point three MIPS. Right. So you're talking about nine more MIPS than the average. That's not ludicrous. That's not like no. hey, let's give everybody gigabit internet. Into, why would you set a standard of uh ten dot one as like? That was in his example. That was his extreme. Was uh, twenty five? Well, no, his extreme. He said four and ten, like at most ten. Right? To set that for the definition yeah. for broadband. And, and so, if like, you want to improve, I already, say our average is already higher than that. Right. I would say if you want to, because I think if you're pushing to improve, you want to raise your benchmark. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, I mean. You see that in grade school, right? Like all, all we would be doing if the average was we'll sit on our butts and be like, "Oh, we're good, we're there." If the <laughs> average was a C, right, and we just were like, "Everyone's great with a D," well, then we're just going to be worse at stuff. Or even C, like if you get a C, you're awesome, you're yeah. fine. You know, like no one's going to improve. Everyone's just sit there at C. Well, anyway, I mean, believe me, I did it. <laughs> so i don't know i just wanted to bring that up because it wouldn't be a show if we weren't you know dumping on the fcc yeah not these days so 
Um, but the the big thing this week was well, first, well, I mean, T Mobile did this a while ago with their uh, binge on unlimited plan, which is kind of quasi unlimited because once you hit a certain point, they would yeah. take you down to three G, and I think your video was throttled at um four eighty i or standard definition. Yeah. Um, but Verizon came out and they're you know unlimited data plan so t-mobile then went and got rid of the standard definition uh requirements so you can do hd now right um and then sprint jumped in and then at&t like you were before you could only get their unlimited data if you had their tv service they're getting rid of that stipulation as of i think you know, as of um, Thursday, last Thursday. So basically everyone, they're, they're saying unlimited, okay? But the first thing I thought is, great, you know, I'll be able to stream on Do my whatever, phone. Yeah. I'll be able to, you know, just use my cell service for internet. No, don't, you know, don't go crazy. That's not really going to be viable yet because... Each one has data limits on, they say unlimited, but if you do 22 gigabits in a month for AT&T and Verizon, then you begin to be, you're, they begin to throttle you. I, so maybe, maybe I just forgot what the word means. Unlimited? Yeah. Oh, I know. But I'm pretty sure it means absence of limits. Yep, that's that's right? what it means. It's okay. okay. It's like you have unlimited data except for these limits. <laughs> these limits, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so okay, there's no Okay, just checking. Sprint. You know, Sprint's playing the price is right game because they made it 23 gigabytes. Right. Uh, gigabytes on their uh, monthly cap. Which if you're gonna Cuz they they went third. If if you're gonna play hmm. in this game. Right. And then that. T-Mobile bet a dollar. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They um, they they went with 28 gigabytes. So they're just right. like, yeah, we're still gonna we're because they're, they're still trying to, they're looking at blazing this trail here, trying to undercut all the competition. Yeah, which... because and and it used to be because their network wasn't as good, but their networks it's actually come up, a yeah. long way. I mean, it's not like I think probably Verizon has the best. Yeah. At but, least here on the East Coast, Verizon's. yeah, oh yeah, but even nationwide coverage, it's yeah, pretty, yeah, it's pretty decent. And then AT and T, but I think T Mobile's punching, you know, punching the same weight right now. Sprint's still lagging behind, but um, so, so there's the the limits on your unlimited plans as it goes to your know, month your monthly data usage. One of the things that is striking to me about that story, though, uh-huh. is as you know, as people that you know frequently defend net neutrality and and competition in general and oh i don't know that whole capitalism thing uh that we're we're kind of fans of in this country you know isn't it funny to see even even though these particular services aren't as great as we might like as soon as one offers it they all offer it, right? Yeah. Well, That's what competition does. Right. And I and it's good because those these wireless companies, they all share the same competitive field. Yeah. So they don't have the same issues that you would see on the wire on the wire lines. Well, side. and that and that's my point. Right. Is like you you see what a functioning co- uh, competitive market does. Right. And it's exactly this. Yep. Exactly. And it's good. I mean, hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping that 5G will kind of fix a lot of these cap issues, but we'll see. Um, For the cost of a single line, now this is where they really start to separate. Sprint, 50 bucks a month. So if you're in a good, and that's the thing with Sprint is it depends where you live. In the country, if you if if you can rent even... really solid up in like the Chicago area, it's all over. I remember like in the Baltimore suburbs. If you were in the north suburbs, Sprint was good. But once you moved around our Beltway to yeah. the west, it was bad. Yeah, um, which is where we live. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it changes. But I know that it's very spotty. Sprint is, but it's fifty bucks a month. T-Mobile, 
um, for one is 70 bucks a month. Verizon's 80 and AT&T is a hundred. Now, I mean, that's pretty pricey for, and that's just the, yeah. the, the, the data line. Um, they, for the additional lines, it, it kind of gets, you know, like it, it tears a bit. Like it's the sprint does 50 for the first 40 for the second T-Mobile will give you a hundred per month for the first two lines. Um, and then 47 bucks, uh, thereafter yeah each the 47 bucks each for three lines so you have to break out the slide rule to figure yeah. out t-mobile starts deal. getting complicated right and verizon does 80 for the first line but then it'll do if you do two it'll do 70 each so 140 and then 54 for each if you do three i went on there and um you know i looked at like i have verizon and I looked at what I would get under this plan. Now, currently, my wife and I share, we have two lines, and we do, you know, we have eight gigabits shared. Right. Or, excuse me, gigabytes shared. And um, between two lines. And for that, plus voice, you know, unlimited texting and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 165 bucks. Okay. The new unlimited plan is 190 bucks, so that's 35 bucks more. But the new plan, like with their new new tiering, if I switch because that you can still get an eight gigabyte right. plan, I would say 15 bucks. So really, it's 50 bucks more, right, to go from eight gigs to unlimited, which is the cost of what internet would cost me. Yeah. So it's really not going to it doesn't it doesn't do, do any a lot. Right. So I'm not going to be and and not only that, but what I didn't mention is it's a 10 gigabyte hotspot cap. So yet Ooh. another limit. So Yeah, it, it, and that's uh, if you can't tell that's what's irritating me about this, right? Like cuz yeah, break out the fine print on these things. Well, let's say the pricing was even between like your data plan and then um and you truly had unlimited service versus like what you currently have and internet access let's say they cost exactly the same right right if you had truly unlimited data on the other well then the logical decision would be to to go with the unlimited plan right. it's just not unlimited no. right like so it's just i i mean it, it's going to be one of those things. They can't be hit with like a truth in advertising. Oh no, you know, suit over it. But but it isn't a true statement. No, not at all. It's it's not. It's not. It, there's limits. Yeah. <laughs> By definition, By definition you're not, not unlimited. unlimited. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, so so because that's the question I, I I've been getting is can I get rid of my like my my home internet and just use my cell service with these plans and my gut reaction is no right now it's getting close though it is but okay first off forget high def right you know um because high def like if we take for like if we look at um we look at Netflix and how they they don't say high def or standard def, but they, when you go into their set, your settings, you can do low, medium, high, um, medium, which is your high def is, you know, 0.7 gigabytes per hour. So if you only have 22, right. You know, that's less than an hour TV a night. Yeah. Which isn't going to have most Americans. You know, you're talking. That's probably what I should watch, but that's <laughs> right. not what I right. do watch. Exactly. Um, now, if you take that down, that's just the medium. If you take it down to the low quality, which is really standard, it's 0.3 gigabytes per hour. So over a month, you're talking, you know, 73 and a third hours. Um, so about a little over two hours a day. That's closer. Yeah, but still, that's before you've used any internet. That's just your, your yeah. video watching. Yeah, so it's just not quite. There. It's not tenable. I mean, if you're really rationing it, maybe. Yeah. But I just don't really don't think it's feasible, especially when they give you 
um, you know, only 10 gigabytes on the hotspot. Well, and that's what people really want to do is ration their internet. Yeah, access. that's exactly what we want to do. That's what I, I really enjoy about the internet is not having information at my fingertips whenever I want it. It's that it's there during set increments of time. Right. I, I, I love rationing things I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love rationing my joy. Which is good. <laughs> so, but I really think, I mean, my hunch is because if you're looking at this from a customer standpoint, you're probably like me right now saying things like WTF people. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't quite Why does this you. even make sense? Like like what 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 does this get me? Well, Here's what it gets them is they can sucker a handful of people in because it says unlimited. Maybe. But I think there's a long play here. Eh, I think right. when 5G comes out, this is a way for them to already set like a price point. To kind of say, oh, well, our limited plan was 100 and whatever, because it's more expensive. Sure. It was here. So now to get this awesome unlimited plan that's much faster, you're going to have to pay this much more. The more unlimited right. plan. The, the unlimited plan with less limits. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's totally, that's totally possible. Right? I mean, I, I kind of think that's what's happening here. Because I really don't see, I don't see a bunch of people sitting in a, in a room and saying, what can we do to make our services better? And then come up with this garbage. No. No, that's, that didn't happen. No. No. <laughs> but uh, Unless it's the same people that came up with now hey, and the stick. The stick. <laughs> and, Sheesh. You know, all the other see, great see marketing previous, gimmicks. Right? previous episode <laughs> where we talk about how every HBO marketing cliche is now used. and direct TV now. now. Or Go. Like something Go. Go is at least better. How is Go better it's than It's better than now? now. I don't know. Well, because it has less letters? I don't know. It just, it was, eh. They're all terrible. Eh, at least Go is, like, on the go. But, like, now, like, when I had cable, I was watching it now. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not Michael yeah, O'Reilly. I'm tomorrow, not teleporting right? into the future with my 25 maybe, mips. Of maybe that's speed. what it, I don't have that service. Right, I'm not maybe watching it later do. or in the past. I'm watching it now. No. Well, <laughs> truth, truth in advertising. <laughs> At least Go made sense. I'm watching it on my mobile. It's HBO Go because right. I can watch it on my mobile. Oh, I get it. Now is just ridiculous. They might as well called it, you know, HBO Watch it, or all right, well, or, can, or can, HBO C. <laughs> can we agree that stick is stupid? Stick is stupid. I mean, okay. because it's just it's uh, not a stick. It's not made of wood. No, right? It doesn't stick to something. We've been down this road. <laughs> <sighs> Chris is out there. Christopher agrees. Chris, Christopher, Christopher agrees. Yes, he did. He commented right away and said, "Yes, that there is, stick. He's there ready is, to march right now with us." I don't know how many people Nels are out there sticks. listening, but <laughs> that gentleman, he agrees. Yeah. So obviously, you can tell Joel and I aren't really so excited about unlimited. No. But if you go on the news and you go, and everyone's talking about it. Like every tech site's like, "Hey, unlimited this and unlimited that." And right. I'm just like, I really don't understand why I need to, because eight, eight gigab, I mean, the way I use my phone between the two of us, because I don't stream too much on my phone. And if I no. do, if I do, it's, it, it's at home on my network. Yeah. So I'm not like out and about watching video. If I'm out of my home, I'm usually doing something to where I'm not watching right. video. So same it, with me. This really doesn't do much for me, especially not enough to pay $50 more a month for the two lines. So I don't, I, I Personally, I would wait because I don't, you know, for something better. It doesn't seem compelling to me. Not at all. Not at all. Even though everyone seems excited about it. So, you know. I mean, it's a cool word. I guess we're not getting sponsored by any of those companies. Uh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> so. <laughs> because up until then, it was a nail biter. Oh, it, oh up yeah. Up until it then, was. Verizon was really <laughs> thinking or AT&T was really thinking. Oh, we're going to sponsor these guys. Man, I just want stamps.com at this point. 
Oh, man, I love those guys. I know. <laughs> or maybe like, I don't know, Blue Apron or one, one of, those. of those mattress companies or something. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit the music on that note. <laughs> so this is Dennis Ostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And have a good week, everybody. Take See, I told Joel I was going to cut his outro. Past Dennis is all talk. Future Dennis, though, sticks by his word. But seriously, I'd like to take a little bit of time here to just remind everybody to go out there and leave a comment with the FCC voicing your support for net neutrality. I explain how to do this in episode 33, aptly titled, How to Save Net Neutrality. If you're enjoying the show, please pick up your iPhone right now, if you have one, and hit the subscribe button. It's how podcasts are ranked. And we would not only appreciate it, but we would also be indebted to you for life. If you don't have an iPhone, subscribe also. I don't know how to tell you how to do that or what app you use, um, but, you know, you can figure it out. If you have any questions or comments, you can uh, follow us on Twitter, at Grounded Reason. Send us an email. That email address is podcast at groundedreason.com. You can hit us up on Facebook or leave a comment on the blog. All the ways to get a hold of us, as always, are in the show notes. Again, thanks for listening, and everyone out there, have a great week.